Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. Now we've done a similar problem before, an exponent that doubles, remember we had i to the z equals 2i, but this is kind of like a generalization of that problem, I replace i with w, another complex number. So we're going to have an exponent that doubles again, but in a more general sense. So can we find the number z such that when you raise a complex number to that power, you're just basically doubling the number? Let's go ahead and find out. We're going to look at some interesting results from Wolfram Alpha, which you can compare to mine. Hopefully, we'll get something similar. Okay, we have something like this w to the z equals 2w. What's your first thought? Your initial thought is probably, why don't we just ln both sides? Let's do it. Okay, ln w to the z equals ln 2w, and then you can kind of move the z to the front, z times ln w equals ln 2w, and I probably need to write this in parentheses to avoid any confusion. I don't think we need it for w, but again, if you want it, we can use it. And then from here, just divide both sides by, you know, w, ln w, and you should get the answer, right? It's that simple, really? Are you serious? Okay, so the million dollar question is, this might be the answer, but do we want to express it this way, right? And in the case of i, for example, you get the ln of 2i, ln of i, and you can kind of break it down. Think about one thing that is particularly important here is the multivariability. Did I say that right? So multivalue nature of ln, maybe I should say that. In other words, here's what I'm trying to say. Ln of a complex number is not like the ln of a real number. So when I, when I say something like ln 5, it's a single value. But when I say ln of 5i or ln 5 in the complex world, it's a different story. Okay? So those two things are very different, but of course they are connected by something in common, and we'll talk about that. All right? So that's a brief intro. Let's go ahead and get to this point, but by not directly logging both sides because we kind of have to be more careful and follow the rules. So here is how it goes. We have w to the z equals 2w. So our goal is to solve for w. If our goal was to solve for, I'm sorry, did I say w? Our goal is to solve for z, sorry about that. So we're going to find z, but isn't it going to be in terms of w? Absolutely, yes. But again, that will be solving because whenever you replace w with something, so think, you can think of it uh, w as a parameter. Uh, w can be a constant. It can be any complex number, which is their general situation, right? So if you were solving for w instead, it would be a different story because we would just divide both sides by w. And then you could just use the exponentials and solve for that, right? For example, you could just write this as e to the power z minus 1 ln w equals this 2 can basically be expressed as 2 times e to the power 2 pi n i. Remember, we're always allowed to multiply by this because this is 1 in the complex world. And after, you know, doing the natural log, it would be like this. We would obviously natural log both sides. That would give us z minus 1 ln w equals ln 2 plus 2 pi n i. And then I would divide both sides by z minus 1, because remember, our goal is to solve for w, so we would isolate ln w, and then, of course, uh, e to the power of both sides should give you the answer. So w from here is actually going to be pretty interesting, so it's going to look like this, and you could probably simplify this a little bit, maybe, but I think I would probably leave it at this point. But as you can see, we can solve for w. Can you reverse the process and solve for z? Let's go ahead and take a look. I still wanted to show you kind of like a two problems in one. I solved for w, now we're going to solve for z, okay? All right, let's start over. w to the z equals 2w. My goal is to solve for z, all right? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's write w to the z as e to the power z ln w. That's what we can do for exponentials, right? Any complex number to another complex number. Otherwise, like, what is the meaning of this, right? This doesn't mean much. Like, okay, I know 1 plus i squared is write the 1 plus i two times, but how can you write 1 plus i 1 minus i times? That's not even an integer, right? I mean, I can't even write something a fraction number of times, let alone complex numbers. So, but 
Here's the trick we're going to use again. We're going to multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi n i because it's always there. Remember when we write a polynomial like x, we know that the coefficient, even though it's not written, is 1 and we, you know, treat it as 1x, correct? Same thing here. In the complex world, 1 is complex, which is written as an exponential. All right, so it's called an exponentiate, I mean anti-exponentiate, well, in other words, natural log that's going to give us z ln w equals ln 2w plus 2 pi n i. Awesome. Now remember, our goal is to solve for z, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by ln w. That's going to give us z equals ln 2w plus 2 pi n i divided by ln w. So the answer we found with the first trial wasn't super bad, except if you replace n with 0, obviously you would get the same thing. But that only gave you one solution. This gives you infinitely many solutions. Now here's the thing. You can break it down even more, right? And to be able to break it down even more, you can kind of distribute this and 2 times w is a product, so we can basically write this as ln 2 plus ln w plus 2 pi n i divided by, and again I'm going to put the w in parentheses because it's a letter, so it doesn't get mixed, and I can kind of write my solution like this. Now what is ln w though? We do not know what w is, but if w is written as r e to the i theta, then ln w would be ln r plus i theta. Of course, I'm kind of taking the principal argument here as theta. If you want to add multiples of 2 pi n i, which we did to find z, you can do that. But again, uh, if this is ln w, I could basically plug it in here and here. But I will still need to know r and theta. In other words, if we know w, we can find z. For example, if w is equal to i, then, of course, from here, z equals ln 2 plus ln i, which is i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n i, and then we would divide it by i times pi over 2. But, again, I could consider adding multiples of 2 pi to this, 2 pi k i, whatever, and then that would give me a more general solution. Okay, great. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. But this is what I found. Do you think this will compare to what Wolfram Alpha says? Not trying to bash it, I just wanted to compare my results and remember, take a good picture and let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha. Ta-da! Here's the result. Do they look so familiar? Okay, it's for you to find out. Do they kind of look different, but why they do look different and are they different? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.